So much has happened since part one. Aaron Carter passed away, Angus Cloud, the list is ever growing. Starting with Carter, he opened up about huffing in the past. When he was found, compressed gas and sedatives were in his system. I go on my Twitter and I see people saying, you look like you have you should go I don't understand how I dedicated 22 years of my life to my fans and now they turn on me. Do you regret ever getting involved in I didn't have life? a choice. It got bad when I was about 15 years old because when I did MTV Cribs the day that I had to go show off that house, my mom and my dad told me we're getting a divorce but you still have to go do this. I had to go show off all the stuff my whole life that was going to be taken away from me. Cloud's Euphoria character, Fez, mirrored his own life story. He played a dealer who had his own habit along with influencing Ruse, which almost ruins her life several times. So the irony was not lost on show creator Sam Levinson. In fact, Levinson opened up about trying to get help for Cloud several times. Euphoria is inspired by Levinson's own struggles as a teenager. Cloud's own using soon grew obvious to both his family and Levinson. HBO paid for Cloud to enter a 30-day inpatient rehab program. Interesting how he turned down playing Mac Miller in a biopic and then passed the same exact way. Hey, real quick. Everyone's talking about the debate about the show, whether it glorifies partying, whether it doesn't. What's your take? It's how anyone takes it, bro. We, uh, I don't think it glorifies nothing, for real. This ain't nothing to play around with. That's just, it's not fun in games. It's serious business, so. How real of a depiction of high school do you think it is? Um, uh, it depends on where you at, man. So, but, yeah. you know what I'm saying? One love. Love's blessed. What would it take for you to take a Mac Miller role in a biopic? I don't know about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Angus. This disease can be manipulated by yes men and handlers. When Michael Jackson sustained an injury during his Pepsi commercial in 1984, it opened up the need for dependency for the pain. That and plastic surgery, recovery medicine from all his procedures, lupus, vitiligo, low self-esteem, and a constant need for what he allegedly referred to as milk within his inner circle. Even from his early childhood beginnings, Jackson was in adult places like Studio 54 with his brothers and younger sister Janet Jackson, who had an interesting experience in the club in the 70s. This is Hollywood. Kanye West lamented about his own dependency in a rant at TMZ that reminded me that the star is easier to control when they have a chemical crutch to manipulate. Cause I would out, bro. I was out. I was on two days after I got off and I was addicted. To two days I got off. I'm yes, it's everywhere. It's not just rich, famous people, but in Hollywood, it's built into the star system. Control. A puppet with a bad habit. Hollywood is not just a microcosm of society, it's an amplified version of its darkest realities. This documentary is not to put the superstar over someone suffering on the street. It's to shine a light on the issue where everyone can see it best. Under a spotlight. Zane, anything you can say about the, uh, the just, just accusations? Okay, How's your health? Well, I can't even see where we're going. Zane, how's your health, buddy? Thank you. Please. Say it for your fans, Zane. Say it for your fans, Zane. Is it something more serious than just a minor illness? There have been rumors of substance. What's going on? No, he's just got a stomach bug. He's okay. He's just, he's just at home. He just needs to, to rest. I say no to... I say no to... Now do that for one solid year? One solid year now, yes. One solid year. Oprah interviews and other journalists who cover these celebrities show the profitability of celebrity pain. Does that mean you're free? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't think I don't have desires for it. <laughs> Constant tabloid fixtures of stars in and out of jail for their behaviors is often more fascinating than their projects. It's very difficult for you to maintain sobriety. Uh, you may take a look at a probation report if you choose. Uh, many, many, many months ago, and if you're rather candid, which said you didn't know whether or not you'd be able to maintain sobriety in that business. That's a call you have to make. Uh, I believe you can do pretty much anything you want to do, uh, but it isn't going to be my decision. And I have to say, quite frankly, here, we have pretty much exhausted, I think, the rehabilitative measures that we can make here. Before he was Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. was already struggling just as much as Tony Stark was. Art imitates life. 
But his lawyers entered a not guilty plea and prosecutors said they were discussing a plea bargain on possession charges that would avoid Downey returning to jail. It's the first time the Ally McBeal star has been seen in public since he checked himself into a rehabilitation center in April following his arrest in Los Angeles on charges of being under the influence. ...to the troubled actor in prison and he reaches out to a psychiatrist for help. I said, Robert, I believe that you had bipolar disorder. He said, yes, I do have bipolar disorder. There are periods of times that I just, I'm so and I spend a lot of money, I'm irritable. He once walked out of an interview when his past issues were mentioned. Your relationship with your father and the role of all of that in, uh, you know, the dark periods you went through and, and taking in all of that. And I just wondered whether, you know, you, you, you think you're free of all of that or whether that's still something I'm sorry, you... I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? I, I, well, I'm just asking questions. That's right. I mean, okay. Bye. Are you... Oh, I'm sorry. I... Sometimes it can feel quite exploitative. Sadly, it takes individual stories along with the systemic nature of this issue in Hollywood to really grasp it. It takes a star to get some people to genuinely care. How many stars from A-list to Z-list fall under this issue? It's not just a dirty secret, it's an open cry for help in an industry-wide problem that won't get a solution no different than those afflicted every day. The gleam of humanity that seeps out from the shine of the celebrity is what makes them human. The fascination with celebrities just like us is a part of the problem. I've been around people and I've gotten off of it and that is enough for me i cannot i can't do that i don't do that you talked about experimenting partying no i never they left the impression that uh, clubs that you tried cocaine. i've experimented in in partying but never that i could never do something like that the thumbnail is a picture of Whitney Houston's bathroom used for Pusha T's album Daytona, acquired by Kanye West for eighty-five thousand dollars to license. And it was, and listen, it was all artistically done. Nobody was like, it wasn't, it wasn't about, you know, taking the picture and, you yeah, know, trying to demean anything. Like I just call the picture organized chaos. Like that's what it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. And sonically, that's what I feel like my album feels like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On the other side of fame and praise lies the reality of its habitual self-destruction. This is why they're so candid, because fame won't let them hide their obvious issues for too long. I call myself a junkie. I refer to myself as a junkie simply so I demystify it. I call myself a fiend because I'm a fiend. This is the issue, but I mean, there are lots of forms in the universe. I had a pocket full of I had a glass of wine on the counter. It was five, you know, it was a clock. I mean, it was just sort of like cocktail hour. And I pocketed five of them, you know, put them in my mouth, took a swig of wine. And from behind me, I heard this, you know, Jamie, I see you. I see you with your little and you think you're so fabulous and so great. But the truth is, you're dead. Demi Lovato has always been open and even gives updates on her sobriety in various documentaries and interviews. When you became heavily, especially after you yeah. relapsed, and it was serious, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you almost... I think that when you're in so much pain that the consequences don't matter to you, you're not thinking about what could happen or what's going to happen to you. You're just in pain and you're, and you just want to escape or numb out and so I put numbing out before everything in my life and when I choose I'm choosing them over family over friends over my career over essentially everything there's just something about those child stars Miley Cyrus expressed why she had to quit the lightest of recreational fun because of how it affected her some know their limits more than others Fergie is another lesser known product turned adult she opened up about the lowest part of her life and what led her there. You were broke, mm -hmm. right? You were addicted mm. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, unemployed yes. a long way from those hard times. Yes. You are right now. Yes. Yeah. But what got me through it 
was a lot of therapy, soul searching, discovering why I took in the first place, because that's really what it is. You were... Yes. Isn't that horrible? I, I, I hear that's horrible. It like... Yeah. It you does a lot of things. You, yeah, you, it, does. it destroys your neurotransmitters. It's not good. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, yeah, it does. It makes you. It can make you crazy. Yeah. Corey Monteith started at just age 13. He tried to get help at 19. Then the Glee cast and crew confronted him and staged an intervention and urged him to get treatment. He listened, and his publicist announced he checked into a facility in March of 2013. He was found alone in his Vancouver hotel just four months later on July 13th. Some people try and don't ever recover. They bear the responsibility to be an open book about their struggle and seek treatment. Some keep their pain private like Prince. The peerless triple threat spent his time singing, dancing, and playing. He was performing on a different level than most. Most artists are not doing pirouettes and dropping into the splits and heels or at all. To perform at that level for so many decades took a toll on the star. Heath Ledger was one of the many accidental losses. When your mind is racing and you can't sleep, you do what you need to do. His passing was very similar to Brittany Murphy. Around the same time, not too many years apart, and in the same generation of talent and film. It's a spinning wheel in Hollywood that feels like it can land on anyone. But some people just fit the archetype more than ever. When I'm good, I'm very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. Hollywood loves a bottle blonde. Jean Harlow didn't pass due to chemical dependency, but still incredibly young at 26. She was the main inspiration for Marilyn Monroe, who would pass just 10 years older at 36. Her passing was a mystery of CIA levels of proportions. John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, loose lips. However convenient and conspiracy-ridden, the toxicology report reads the same as most of them. They took too much went to sleep, and didn't get up. In their final moments, they all seemed to be looking for help that they never get. Anna Nicole Smith was directly inspired by the platinum blonde legacy Marilyn left, and she followed it like a reimagined Jane Mansfield. With the dawning of that imagery and those mannerisms, and a play-by-play -play in the Book of Fame, she met a similar fate when she passed away at 39, just three years older than Monroe. And, of course, she garnered the same intrigue of the possibility of a hidden hand at play. At this point, the industry is starting to reduplicate not only the iconic imagery, but unfortunate demise. This is no truer than in hip-hop. They nearly all have this look when they pass so young, even if it's not from the chemical side of things. What is going on in Hollywood to where the young can only shine for but a few moments before they're taken out? By accidental overindulgence or violence, they seem to go a lot quicker than other types of entertainers, especially in recent years. When the devil comes to collect, he doesn't knock politely. DMX had long been a raucous rap legend whose energetic delivery and stage presence made him one of the best and most unique stars in the genre. I look back at his imagery, his interviews, and his passing, and I start to think maybe the circumstances are more spiritually affected than we'd like to admit. Truth is stranger than fiction, right? Sold my soul to the devil. <laughs> Price was cheap. It was cold on this level. It's twice as deep. Elvis Presley's ill-fated decline was physical and chemical. His diet coupled with chemicals led to weight gain later in his career. The cause of this dependency? His manager Tom Parker made a grueling schedule. By the 70s, he had started the vicious cycle that would lead to his demise. The king of rock and roll was found after falling off the toilet uppers to wake and downers to sleep. Sound familiar? Of all the stars who looked so drastically different from the start of their career by the end of their lives, I would say Presley is the second most shocking. The first, Judy Garland. Garland was on the same chemical cocktail very early on in her career to deliver the masterfully made Wizard of Oz. This is the price for Hollywood iconography when the show ponies are ridden until they break. Dabbling to cope with no work to be found in the industry and dying broke because of it is an age-old tale in Hollywood. This is also the case with the other Dorothy. They both shared such similar ends. Dorothy Dandridge was a marvel in her day. She was the first black woman to be nominated for Best Actress in a Leading Role. But in the 50s, there was only so many first 
that could be allowed. Only so much work for roles that just didn't exist for Dandridge and she became depressed and dependent until her passing in 1965 at just 42. Four years before Garland passed at 47 in 1969, and five years younger. On the other end of the spectrum, some stars have an abundance of opportunity and enter the devil's playground with no limitations just to unwittingly lose a game of chess mistaken for checkers. No one is wiser than someone with nothing but time. In his playground, the devil makes the rules. There is no resolve for someone looking to lose themselves in the land of the spiritually lost. River Phoenix was talented and highly sought after since he emerged as a young child star. As his star grew, he tried to keep his habit a secret as he felt it might affect his career. That secret ended up taking his life. The Viper Room in name alone sounds like a spiritual snake den, more so than a nightclub. It devoured him whole. Younger brother Joaquin Phoenix made the 911 call to no avail the night he lost River who passed at just 23. Joaquin still reflects on that loss and how it shaped him moving forward. When I was 15 or 16, my brother River um, came home from work and he had a VH, VHS copy of a movie called Raging Bull. And he sat me down and he made me watch it. And the next day he woke me up and he made me watch it again. And he said, you're going to start acting again. This is what you're going to do. And uh, he didn't ask me, he just told me. And I am indebted to, to him for that because um, acting has given me such an incredible life. Some stars like Britney Spears barely survive their partying days. She's free, but clearly not well. She's dancing with knives in her underwear on Instagram. A long life of manipulation will do that to you. That and paparazzi hounding coupled with the loss of custody of your children will turn America's sweetheart into America's freak show. She was right there along with Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan. The party girl era of the 2000s was a glorified mess of memorable moments and scary situations. Mugshots and mayhem. So, should we let her come up? Yeah. No, don't, please. Come on, Courtney. Hi. Good. <laughs> In part one, I spoke about how it went all the way back to the silent film era with stars like Wallace Reed. But where does it end? How can it be prevented when the same narrative is pushed over and over until it becomes expected? If the person struggling on the street becomes a clean star, we cheer. When the star becomes an unclean shell of themselves due to chemical dependency, we only say it's a problem when they pass. And when so many decades and similar cases repeat themselves, there are often bizarre and questionable circumstances. The overworked, the lonely, the depressed, the insomnia ridden, they all pass too soon. There is a human behind the stage name. The flowers soon become piled at the gravesite rather than handed out by fans on the street. We have an obsession with falling stars who only wish to get better. This is pop culture at its finest and darkest. Chemical thrills that kill. That is the shadow behind the big Hollywood sign that attracts so many to stardom. Fame, wealth, and a dangerous cult of gambling with your life on the shortest ride you can ever take with so much to gain and with so little time to enjoy it. And that's if you ever get to it in the first place. Welcome to Hollywood.